Hello and welcome to Lady Dynamite Creates. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made my Venetian Carnival doll. For those of you who don't know, the Carnival of Venice is an annual festival that takes place in Venice, Italy. It's famous for all the costumes and masks created for the festival and even has a contest called La Maschera Pubella. Please excuse my butchering of that phrase, I'm sure it's pretty bad. For this project, I chose a Claudine Wolf doll, and I prepped her just like normal, but this time around I did not need her wolf ears, so I chopped those off. I then popped her into a cup of hot water until the vinyl was soft enough to remove her head. Now I go ahead and I attempt to scrape out all the plugs in her head and pull them out with some pliers. However, I knew this was going to be an arduous task when I started it because when I was cutting her hair, I could tell someone had treated her hair with baby powder to try to help with the stickiness. And once I got in there trying to pull the stuff out with pliers, it was just a gluey mass just all glued together in there. So I did go ahead and slice open the back and pull them out that way. This does create a little bit of extra work for me later, but as you can see, I would have been at it forever trying to pull all of that out. Then using 100% acetone, I go ahead and remove all of the face paint. And you can see here, I do take a little bit of extra time to wipe into the uh, scalp and remove some of that glue that's just stuck to the inside of the head because it was really, really bad and I don't want that stuff seeping out again later. And since I have removed the ears, I do need to close up those holes, so I use a little bit of needle and thread and stitch those up. If I was going to fully reboot this doll, I would have definitely reinforced these holes with some light fabric, but this should be good for what I have planned. And then I use a little bit of super glue to close up that back seam. Now onto the hair prep. I have this beautiful chunky yarn here that I plan to use, and the first thing I do is I unravel it into its three strands. Then I take the ends of the strands and I just pull the tips. This just separates the yarn strands into their individual fibers. Once I have a decent amount pulled, I pick up my pile and I hold by one end and then I pull the bottom and then just match those ends back up to the top so that all of the tips are together. And then I hit it with a flat iron to just clean it up a bit. And as you can see, you can get some really decently long wefts this way. And then I go ahead and get started on the reroute. The style I have planned is a very low bun, so I don't need uh, to reroute the whole thing. I wound up just rerouting the front hairline. I just slide the needle onto the weft near the tip of it and plug it into the head. And since the yarn is so fluffy, you wind up only having to reroute about every other hole. Now to create some wefts for the rest of the hair. I go ahead and trim the tip of my pulled yarn so that it has a flat edge and then I lay it down and apply a little bit of Mod Podge glue to the tip of it and let that dry. And then using a little bit of liquid fusion glue, I apply those wefts up the back of the head until I meet the hairline. Once the wefts have dried, I can secure the rerouted portions with a little bit of the liquid fusion as well. I just put a little bit of glue in the head and then I use a Q-tip to swirl it around making sure to touch those plugs. Now let's get started on the face up. I'm using watercolor pencils, some pan pastels, um, I actually used a little bit of metallic watercolors this time around as well as some gouache and mica powder. First I prep her in two coats of Mr. Super Clear and this just gives the vinyl some tooth to it to allow the pencils to draw on. The first thing I do is I sketch in the eye shape using a pink watercolor pencil and then I fill in the scleras with a white pastel pencil. And once I'm happy with the eye shape I go ahead and start contouring out some of the shadows in the face and I just make sure to, to detail around the eyes and the eyelids, uh, nose, mouth, and then I hit up the cheeks with a fluffier brush. I do a few passes of this, slowly building up the color, and once I'm happy, I go ahead and hit the highlights with a brighter color, and then I go ahead and apply some blushing as well. The final thing on this layer is a little bit of pastel to the lips for color. Layer 2 starts with the darkening of the eyeliner line, as well as detailing out the tear ducts and the water line.
Then I go ahead and start adding in my eyebrows and I'm using the dot method making sure my dots stay symmetrical. And once I'm happy with that, I just connect my dots and then go in with an eraser and refine that. I do another pass to the eyeshadow, giving her a very smoky eye. And then I start detailing some of the lips, making it deeper in the center and add in that darker lip line. My final thing on this layer is accentuating some of the highlights again. On my fresh layer, the first thing I start doing is detailing out some of the individual hairs in the eyebrows, and I use several different tones of grays and blacks to do this with, just to match her hair. And then I start sketching in my iris shape. And once I'm satisfied with that, I base in the color and define the pupil placement. And the final thing I do on this layer is a dusting of mica powder. The first thing I do on this fresh layer is start pushing the contrast in the eyes. Then I add in the gray shadows to the whites of the eyes to give it a rounder feel. After seeing that the mica powder didn't pop as much on the eyelids as I was hoping for, I decided to use a little bit of gold watercolor to give it that extra shine right on the highlight of the lid. Right after this, I went ahead and added in the bottom eyelashes as well as a few beauty marks, but my camera battery died and did not capture it, but that was the final step on that layer. On the fresh layer, I went ahead and detailed out the eyes some, as well as adding in those top lashes. I did add a few pumps of white with the pastel pencil. And then on my final layer, I use a little bit of whitewash to add some details into the eyes. And then I add in some highlights to the waterline. And then with the catch lights this time around, I chose to go a little bit differently and try to give them a more realistic feel rather than just white dots. Then let's move on to the clothing and accessories and continuity errors. So I did this before I did her face up, of course, because I didn't want to ruin any of my work. But to make her mask, I coated her in a nonstick spray and then I heated up a little bit of thermoplastic and I draped that over the face. Once I was happy with the impression, I pulled it off and trimmed it down some. And definitely do this at your own risk. As you can see, even with the nonstick spray, this Thybra thermoplastic stuck so bad and it was so hard to get off. After I had the mask off, I went ahead and started marking where I wanted the actual edge of the mask to be. So I marked that out and cut it down and then I cut out my eye holes as well. Doing this definitely requires patience. It took lots of just tiny whittling down to get the shape just right because once you cut away too much, it's you cut away too much and have to start over. Once I was happy with the shape, I went ahead and gave it a good sanding down. This helps remove any of tiny imperfections as well as fingerprints that may have occurred. Now to figure out the details of the mask. I looked at some other masks for reference and I sketched out a design that I liked. Once I'm satisfied with my design, I took a little bit of 3D fabric paint and transferred it over into like a tiny little piping bag that I made and I piped the designs on. This does tend to flatten a bit when it dries, so I had to go over this about three or four times to get the three dimensional look that I wanted. Once the fabric paint had dried, I went ahead and gave this a base coat of white and gold and then I did some antiquing washes on it with black acrylic. I would just apply the thinned out acrylic and then wipe away the excess. Now onto the headdress. For this I used a little bit of warbler thermoplastic. I heated it up and then I pulled it down over a domed surface and then cooled it off with some canned air. After this, I check the fit on the doll and then I make some sketches to see how I think this design should go. Once I'm happy with the rough shape, I go ahead and start trying to refine it a little bit more to the doll's actual fit. Now that I have my cap portion fitted and correct, I can go ahead and design the crest. 
So I lay this down on a sheet of paper and draw out my design. I use this paper template to create my warbler piece and then I go ahead and heat that up and attach it to the base of the cap. I plan to cover this in fabric, but because it has complex curves, I'm going to need to make a template first. So I coat the entire thing into some tape. I mark where all the edges are, as well as where the two pieces meet. Then I take this off and cut it out and make paper templates from it. Any of the pieces that will not lay flat need to have darts cut into them. Once I have all my fabric pieces cut, I take a little bit of low temperature hot glue and glue these down to the thermal plastic. It's very important to use the low temperature hot glue because the high temp could warp your thermal plastic. Once you have all the pieces glued down, you're going to notice that the warbler is still going to poke through just a little bit. And to solve this, I took and created my own flocking from this velvet fabric. I just took my razor blade and scraped it down the fabric until I had this fluff. Now using a little bit of gem tack, I apply it to the very edge of my piece and then I pat my flocking on. I like using this gem tack glue specifically because it is made for gluing rhinestones onto fabric so it dries clear. Once the glue is dried, I gently brush off the excess for a nicely finished edge. For the underside of the headdress, I simply match up some blue paint and paint it. The final thing to do on the headdress is to embellish it, and I just use various fabric trims as well as some nail art gemstones. Now onto her clothes. The first thing I did was created the custom trim that I want on her dress. This is a design I created in Inkscape, so I had saved it out as a PNG to keep the transparency, and I am just selecting simple image type. Then I go and check my preview to make sure that there is no weirdness in my cutting and I continue on to save as a cut image. Now I tell it to insert the image that I want onto my workspace. I resize it to the size that I want and then I go ahead and duplicate this because I need one for each side of my dress. I knew I might need a few of these to go in other places, so rather than just having a whole bunch of wasted space, I went ahead and duplicated again, created a rectangle that I put over one edge of it. I select both pieces together, then I hit slice. This separates the two pieces. Now select the top that you don't want anymore and just delete. Now just move the piece that you do want over into its space, and then you can Control C to copy, Control B to paste. I resize this because I decided I liked it a little bit bigger. Once I'm happy with it, I just hit make it. If everything looks good, I continue and then I select my material, which is a heat transfer vinyl that is non-Cricut branded. Then we move over to the machine part. I attach my heat transfer vinyl good side down to my mat, making sure that I have my vinyl within the parameters of the thing that is being cut out. Then once I'm happy, I load it into the machine with a two arrow button and hit the C, which is cut, and this starts the job. When the cut job is finished, hit the arrows to unload, and then you can pull your vinyl off the mat and cut out the pieces. Then to weed the pieces, I take my little tools and I pull up the pieces that I don't want to be on the finished design. So don't pull up any of my little swirly bits, leave those there, pull up the outside bit. You should be left with your design on a piece of clear protective film. Now on to the actual sewing part of the costume. I have a half circle skirt pattern here I've cut out and I am attaching a little bit of decorative trim to the bottom as well as adding a gathering stitch to the top. Now just gather that up and attach it to the waistband. Now we're going to sew that back side up with right sides facing. Remember to leave enough room at the top so that you can still fit her into the skirt. And here I'm going to show you how to add a ribbon to help your skirts from riding up. It's something I usually do but I don't usually show, but I take a piece of ribbon and I put it on my doll and I tape it around. Then I put my skirt on the doll and I mark on the ribbon where I would like that skirt to sit. 
Then I pin that ribbon to my skirt and then I stitch in the ditch on the front side so that you don't see the stitch line. Once those are attached, I just trim off the excess ribbon at the top. This doll wasn't an incredible amount of work. It was one of the more costume heavy dolls I've done. And this doll was a definite labor of love. I got discouraged sometimes just having to remake things that weren't working and that can get to you after a little while. I'm feeling like I definitely need a easy project next. Now on to the overskirt. I take this rectangle piece of fabric and I'm going to be attaching this piece of ribbon to the side and the bottom. Then we're going to attach the heat transfer vinyl. The first thing you do is just make sure you've got it in the right place and then you iron it down or in my case if you're lazy flat iron it down. Once the heat transfer vinyl is attached to the fabric, you just pull off the protective film. Then we move on to the bodice of the dress. This is the fabric that I have planned for the inset and I have hemmed the top portion of it and I am attaching a little bit of ribbon to decorate the top. Then I go ahead and I sew the inset to the sides. To have the look of an underdress, I am creating this dicky area and I am attaching the collar to that. And you can see I've marked on this piece where the overdress should lay on it, so I am attaching that with a little bit of hem tape. And once those pieces are all together, I go ahead and add in the heat transfer decoration to the bodice as well. For the puffed portion of the sleeve, the first thing I do is do gathering stitches along the top and the bottom seam. For the bottom portion of the sleeve, I attach a little bit of ribbon trim to the cuff, and then I go ahead and attach those two sleeve pieces. Once the sleeves are complete, I can gather up that puffed edge and attach it to the bodice. Now I can go ahead and sew up the side seams of the bodice as well as the arms. Now I'm going to gather these two overskirt pieces and attach them to the hip pieces. Once that's together, I'm going to overlay the bodice and sew these on. I don't want to do these right sides together because it would create too much bulk, so I'm going to cover up that seam line with a little bit of decorative trim. The final step is to sew off the back, leaving enough room for her to still get through, and then attach some Velcro for a closure. I want to thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. Remember, always be creating!